The appetizer is prepared by Vince Tyler at Carlucci in Rosemont, a suburb of Chicago. It's a hefty portobello mushroom salad with a warm pancetta dressing. Then from St. Michael's, Maryland, Vincent Van Heck presents an entree from the inn at Perry Cabin, roasted red snapper with garlic, lemon, and parsley sauce. Dessert is served by Lisa Liggett in New Orleans. It's her version of the classic blancmange, an almond-flavored cooked pudding. She uses yogurt and presents edible flowers. Carlucci is a very busy Italian restaurant near the even busier O'Hare Field in Chicago. The executive chef, Vince Tyler, had good credentials, having worked at the highly touted Spiaggia, then traveling to Italy for a year of work in various operations. His dish is a portobello salad. Okay, for the warm uh, pancetta and shallot dressing, we're gonna take our sliced pancetta. Pancetta is um, a rolled and cured Italian bacon. Unlike uh, the American bacon, it's not smoked. We're just gonna slice it thin. It can be purchased at most Italian grocery stores. It's best to have them slice it thin on the slicer there, making your work a little bit easier. All you have to do then is stack it up and slice it thin. We're gonna saute this off until it just starts to brown. evening it out in a pan on a medium flame. In the meantime, we'll slice our shallots. Slicing them in half first will make it easier to keep them flat. And then we'll just slice them nice and thin. Lengthwise. When we saute off the pancetta, we're gonna wanna let it sit and not really move the pan around that much. The idea is that the more you move the pan around and take it on and off the fire, it'll cool off too much. We're also gonna slice our, shell, our chives up. The chives will go in at the very end of the dish. We'll gently slice these up real thin. Try not to push down on them a lot, which flattens them out. Just as parts of the pancetta start to brown, you can see here, that's when we'll add in our shallots. If we wait too long, the pancetta will burn and get too crispy by the time the shallots are soft. So add our shallots and mix that in. By the time the shallots are soft, the pancetta should be almost a golden brown. At this point, the onions are nice and brown, the pancetta is brown and crisp. We're going to add into it while it's still on the fire our balsamic vinegar. Just let this warm up a little bit. We're gonna take it off the fire and add in our olive oil and our chives. And then we'll set this on the side until we use it later on the salad. To roast off our portobello mushrooms, we're first taking off the stem. We'll place two of the mushrooms capside down in our olive oil. We'll season them with salt and pepper. Chopped fresh rosemary and garlic. They go into a 375 degree oven. Now we're going to roast these off in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're soft. The chef preps the salad. 
taking our yellow tomato, slicing just around the outside of it, about a quarter of an inch. And this will remove the meat of the tomato and hopefully not many of the seeds. It'll give us nice slices that we can julienne. A variety of mixed greens comprise the salad. We'll add in some of our yellow tomatoes. Taking a look at our mushrooms when they start to get a little dark brown on top, and about halfway soft, we'll turn them over. We need about three or four more minutes. In the meantime, we'll dress our salad with our warm dressing. Should be just warm and not too hot. If it's too hot, it'll wilt the lettuce too fast. And I try not to put the dressing right on top of the lettuce, but I'll put it on the outside and then toss it in. This way I won't bruise the lettuce as much and it won't overly coat them. Generally what happens is after you dress the, the lettuce, all the tomatoes and pancetta fall to the bottom. So we want to make sure that we evenly distri distribute the tomatoes and pancetta on top. So we'll take one of our mushrooms out, let it drain from the oil. We're going to slice the mushroom almost all the way through, being careful not to smash it down. Just leaving it attached by about a quarter of an inch at the top of the mushroom and slicing it in about quarter inch slices. A little bit of an angle instead of slicing straight through. We'll take a little bit of the oil and garlic, and drizzle that over the top. Vincent van Heck was born in Belgium and raised in London. At the time of taping, he was executive chef at the Inn at Perry Cabin, a sprawling property on the Miles River at Maryland's eastern shore. He subsequently moved to Southern California. The entree is roasted red snapper with garlic sauce. The chef begins by trimming a large snapper filet that has been scaled. The skin was left on. I'm going to actually catch the, cut this fillet into, into triangles uh, for a presentation purpose. You can serve the, uh, the fillet actually cut into uh, to portions down the fillet, um, but for, for presentation purposes I will actually cut the fillet into triangles. Meanwhile, the chef cooks minced garlic, which will eventually become the base of the sauce. Put in all your garlic. Just make sure that the garlic is nicely coated with the olive oil. And we need to roast that in an oven around 375 degrees until it becomes a nutty, golden brown texture. The vegetable garnish, julienne on a mandolin, includes carrot, zucchini, green part only. 
the outside of yellow squash and using a knife, julienne leek and julienne fennel. Now the chef takes a look at the garlic. See here that the garlic is starting to crisp it up. Just going to give it a little bit of a stir and just cook it for a little bit longer until it's all completely golden brown. Take about one more minute. Meanwhile, sliced onion completes the vegetable prep. The garlic is drained on a paper towel. So you just put this on a bit of kitchen towel just to absorb the uh, excess oil. Now the chef seasons the snapper fillets. On both sides. Now you can flour the snapper. Uh, I prefer not to. Um, I'm actually using a non-stick pan, uh, so I shouldn't have any problems. But if you, uh, if you do have a regular pan, perhaps it's a good idea just to flour it very, very lightly. Uh, it just, it just uh, makes sure that it doesn't stick. So in the non-stick pan, just a little bit of olive oil. Just basically wait till the, uh, the olive oil just, just starts to smoke. Then uh, you know you've uh, reached a good temperature. So you can see just uh, it's starting to smoke there. Put the uh, red snapper skin side down to start off with. Just need to sear the skin off. Let's flip it over. Just sear the other side off. Put it back on the skin side. And put it in the oven, preheated. 375, uh, for around about uh, four to five minutes. The vegetables are cooked in butter based on the cooking time for each. Just about there. And then start off with your, uh, the harder vegetables. The onion, fennel, carrots, and the leek. And start to just to saute. You just basically need to uh, cook the vegetables to allow them to go soft. You don't, you don't really want any colour. The zucchini and yellow squash will go in last. At this stage, on the, uh, on the snapper, as you can see, it's not quite cooked. I'd just like to add just a little bit of thyme, gives it a, just that little bit extra flavour. Now the chef continues with the sauce employing an interesting method. It's very important that with the butter, um, it does actually reach that hazelnut uh, stage uh, because it makes all the difference to the taste. We've almost reached that now, just a little bit longer. This is a very fast sauce, very precise sauce also. So we're almost getting to noisette there. Okay, we're at noisette now. Throw in all your garlic. And just cook your garlic off just for a, a few seconds in there. Take your pan off the heat. Add some lemon juice. Bear in mind, 
you want to avoid burning the garlic and the butter. Nice lot of uh, fr freshly chopped parsley. Presentation begins with the vegetables. Red snapper just propped to the side. You can see how the skin is now quite nice and crispy. It's very pleasant to eat. And your garlic sauce, just a little bit over the fish. A little bit on the plate. A sprig of fennel leaves finishes the plate. class Windsor Court Hotel in New Orleans features the pastry of Lisa Liggett. She trained at the French Culinary Institute in New York and also holds a BA in psychology. Always helpful, especially for a pastry chef. Her artistic dessert is blancmange. Today we're going to make a blancmange, which is a yogurt almond flan. We're going to start out with the plastic molds. We use edible flowers. <laughs> and we're going to take some white wine and we're going to heat it up with some simple syrup, which is sugar and water. And we're just going to warm that. And we have gelatin sheets, and you have to bloom the gelatin in water before you add it. Cold water, must be cold water, to soften the gelatin. Once the leaves have softened, they are squeezed dry and go directly into the wine simple syrup mixture. I'm going to add it in here. Just till it's melted. And then we're going to pour it on top of the flowers, about three tablespoons. Okay, and then you want to refrigerate this until it's set. The blancmange starts with 12 ounces of plain yogurt and six ounces of sugar. And a whisk in our sugar. We have to soften our gelatin again, one sheet at a time. This is almond extract. And you want to squeeze the water out. And we're going to microwave it to bloom the gelatin. You can also bloom the gelatin over a hot water bath. And as you can see, the gelatin is ready. So we whisk that in. The softened gelatin melted in about 20 seconds on high. 
After incorporation, whipped cream is folded in. A little cream at first. And then the rest of the cream. Then the mixture goes into the molds. The white wine mixture has already set. Right, we're going to refrigerate that till set. That's going to be a few hours, best if overnight. After the flans have set, a round of sponge cake becomes the base. We're going to set it on top of this. The domes are dipped in hot water to unmold, and a passion fruit sauce accompanies for presentation. Passion fruit, pure, passion fruit puree that's been thickened slightly with cornstarch. We're going to garnish it with a few berries. 